today I'm going to talk about what earring sizes I get for all my cartilage piercings. So you probably know this if you've clicked on this video, but in case you don't know, for cartilage jewelry it's very important to pick out the right size, which includes like the length of the bar, or if it's a hoop then the diameter, as well as the gauge, which is how thick the actual part that goes through your ear is. It's a little bit tricky to figure out what size you need, so I'm going to share what sizes and types of jewelry I wear, where I got it from, as well as some of the ways that I kind of tried to figure out what my sizes were. If you want to know more about my ear piercings, I have two videos, so I'll be linking one of them up in the corner over here and then the other down in the description below, so be sure to check that out. And before getting started, I would really appreciate it if you clicked that subscribe button and thumbed up this video. So let's start with my forward helix. I have a flat back push pin libre. So with a lot of cartilage jewelry, you have to screw in the backing, but with this one, you don't. It's just a push pin, so it's very, very easy to put in. And that's extremely helpful because this particular piercing, it's very tight. There's not a lot of space to like twirl around a backing. So that was very, very helpful there. I went with an 18 gauge earring. An 18 gauge piercing is one of the thinner options that you can usually go for. And I like to keep my piercings very dainty. So I do like to go with the thinner options. Most jewelry for cartilage is like 16, 18, and 20 gauge I've noticed. So for the bar length, I went with a six millimeter bar. I find that it's a little bit too long for that particular area. I believe six millimeters is the standard size, but for me, I could have definitely went down a little bit because I have some space. And then the actual stone is 1.5 millimeters. It's absolutely tiny. I wanted something super, super dainty, but I actually think that I should have gone with something a little bit bigger because it's really not noticeable at all. And I want it to be at least a little bit noticeable. I might also try a hoop out in that spot. Let's move on to my conch. So for my conch, I like to swap out studs and hoops. I think my favorite is the hoop, but it gets a little bit irritated if I sleep on that side because it's like sticking out so much. But I do get a clicker hoop. If you don't know what that is, it's a hoop that doesn't have any hinges or any thing, or I guess it does have a hinge, but when you close it, it doesn't have any clasps or hinges that stick out and can get caught on your ear, so it becomes completely smooth. So mine is a 20 gauge, 10 millimeter, I keep on wanting to say millimeter. 10 millimeter diameter hoop. In my opinion, the diameter could be a little bit bigger because sometimes it feels a little bit snug. Like it doesn't feel uncomfortable, but I feel like it just looks like it's pressing down a little bit too much. And I went with 20 gauge because I wanted something that was visibly thin since in a hoop, you can see like how thick the actual piercing is. If I wear a stud, then I will honestly just put in a regular one that I wear in my earlobes just because I have still not gotten a around to getting one specifically for that piercing that I really like. I used to have a silver one in there. I believe it was a flat back, but it was the kind that you have to screw in. So it was a little bit difficult to put in and it was 18 gauge and six millimeters in length. The width was perfectly fine, even though the clicker hoop is 20 gauge and then this one's 18. I think it's perfectly comfortable for me to like switch a size. So that's not the biggest issue if you can't find something in the exact size you want, as long as it's not too far are different if it's only like one up or one down then you should be fine switching them out the length it was just right i think if i sized down it would have been too small yeah so six millimeters was perfect for that area now let's move on to my regular helix piercings on this ear i have two and i switch them out between hoops and studs once again with those i can totally wear regular stud earrings in there but the problem with regular studs is that they're typically the butterfly back ones and they get snagged a lot and while they don't really get snagged on your earlobes because your earlobes are kind of close to your head, when it comes to your helix especially, it kind of sticks out more. So you could wear regular studs pretty much in any piercing that fits, but it's not the best idea. It's just definitely not the most comfortable. For these, right now, the hoop that I have, it's also the same exact clicker hoop. This one is seven millimeters in diameter, so it's a bit smaller. I could definitely size down with it. Then it would just kind of rest higher up on my ear and it would hug my ear more. At the moment, it kind of flops down. I personally like it to flop down, so I like this size, but a smaller size would definitely fit. So I think six millimeters, seven millimeters usually is good for your helix. 
works. But if your ears are a little bit bigger in that area, then maybe eight millimeters. I had an eight millimeter one there once and it didn't look too big either. It was fine. So I think you could be pretty flexible with those, I guess is my point. And the clicker hoop is also a 20 gauge piercing. It's nice and thin, but also not, not too, too thin. At one point, I also had a different hoop in there and it wasn't like the clicker hoop. It was the kind that you had to like bend out, like thread through and then bend closed. That was also a good option. Those are usually cheaper. The one I had was good, but it did tarnish, but it was super, super cheap. And the one downside was there was always a little gap where the two ends would meet. And I think that's okay if you've had your piercing for a long time, but if it's a fresh piercing and that part gets stuck inside your ear, there's a chance that your ear will close like in that gap if that makes sense and that happened to me not like super bad where mm, it was like stuck but it just kind of hurt to kind of move it around because it would get caught the other helix jewelry that i have right now it's a ball back stud so as you can see it has a little ball on the back it doesn't get snagged on things i think i prefer a flat back just because it's you know more minimal and more flat but this is also nice they just didn't have a different option and the ball is also easier to hold so it might be easier to take in and out although i always get <laughs> my sister's help change those out this one's also 20 gauge and the dot is one millimeters and the stone is 1.8 millimeters so they're very tiny but i think it looks so cute with the two together so I've always gotten all my cartilage jewelry from Etsy, except for the ones that the piercer put in. By the way, the ones that my piercer put in were always a bit thicker and a bit chunkier. I believe it was more of like a 16 gauge type of situation, maybe 18 depending, but they were always a bit thicker and also a bit longer in like the bar length and the diameter. And that's because they do account for swelling and then also they want the hole to be big enough. I, I don't know exactly the reason, but I feel like it makes sense to, you know, kind of make it a little bit bigger. Every single time I've purchased cartilage jewelry, I've got it off of Etsy. Some of my favorite shops are, and I'm so sorry, I might be pronouncing these wrong, but one of them is Biachi. One of them is Even K US. And then I also got these tiny, tiny hoops from Leo B Tiny Hoops. Those were the ones that tarnished quickly, but they were really inexpensive and they're super dainty. So I would still recommend them. You just might need to replace them here and there. The exact earrings that I have will be linked also in the description with the sizes and everything in case you need <laughs> a refresher and I'll definitely be purchasing some more jewelry from them because I kind of I've had these ones in for like a year or maybe even two at this point and I feel like I need to switch it up a little bit now that we've gotten all that information out of the way I want to talk about some of the tips I have for you guys if you're trying to figure out what size you need so first of all I would say don't get really expensive jewelry right away if you don't know your size you don't want to buy like a hundred dollars earring made with like real diamond or whatever and then find out that it doesn't fit because you can't really return piercing jewelry because it's not sanitary which totally makes sense they can't reuse it so it's wasteful and everything so that being said definitely just start out experimenting with cheaper jewelry the ones that i have are definitely not expensive they're pretty affordable so i would suggest those the other thing is to watch videos like this one and see what other people are putting into those piercings or maybe like leave some comments down below if you've had any experience and maybe we could help each other out in the comments i think the sizes that i mentioned in this video are pretty average definitely use those as a baseline i think you probably can't go wrong with an 18 gauge or a 20 gauge if you want something thin 22 gauge also works but then the risk with that is that your ear piercing closes up a little bit and then not a lot of people make 22 gauge piercings so then you might have some trouble finding ones that'll fit if you're piercing gets really small. My next tip is to ask your piercer what they pierced you with and that's a good place to start. Usually like I said before they'll pierce you with a thicker earring so you could definitely go for a thinner one. Definitely like obviously a thinner piercing will fit into a, a bigger hole. You could also definitely try measuring. You would probably want someone else's help get like a super tiny measuring tape and use the millimeters and try to approximate it. You could also if you have an old stud or something you could get like a marker and put the stud in and then draw on the stud where it comes out in the back with like a sharpie pull it out and then measure from the base to like where you drew and see how many millimeters that is millimeters are super super tiny so it's not the most accurate but it could definitely be a good baseline i honestly kind of guessed when it came to picking my jewelry i did the same thing i kind of did a little bit of research figured out the average is and then yeah just kind of went and ordered a few different 
different ones. They weren't expensive and some of them at first didn't really work out. Eventually I found ones that I really liked and now I have a good understanding of what I need. Still not perfect. Before wrapping up, I have some additional tips for you guys if you just got your ears pierced. First of all, don't switch out your piercings until they're healed. Whatever your piercer told you, usually it's about a year. I know it sucks to wait that long, but, but, if your jewelry is really, really bothering you, then I think it's perfectly fine to switch them out. Because if you haven't seen my video about my piercings, when I got my two helixes pierced, the piercer put in like really strong butterfly back earrings. Like they were the kind where like, they're not gonna fall out, but the butterfly back got caught on everything. So as soon as my piercing started to heal, it would get caught in something and then it would hurt a lot and kind of like open up the wound again. I kind of got tired of waiting for them to heal because it felt like no progress was being made and I switched them out to some little infinite hoops and I know a lot of people don't say to put in the hoops. They were also much thinner than the hole that the piercer made and because of that they ended up healing up so so much quicker. They stopped getting snagged on things because they laid nice and flat against my ear. As for my conch piercing, the piercer pierced me with a hoop and that got snagged a lot. So I eventually switched it to a stud with a flat back and that stopped getting snagged and then it also healed faster. So a lot of people don't say to not switch out your piercings and I think that's true, but it also depends. Like if they are bothering you and you know that that's the cause, then yeah, switch them out. Don't play with them. Like don't switch them out a ton until they're healed. And after they're healed then you could play around with it and have fun. I think that's pretty much it. I hope that it was helpful. Be sure to check out my other videos about piercings and jewelry if you're interested. Click that subscribe button as well so that you could um yeah see more of these videos when they do come out and i will see you in the next video bye